you're stuck in a house with a demonic mirror that you're trying to prove is haunted, but you can't trust anything you see, hear, or feel, and it's out to kill you, what do you do? What is up? Welcome. In this video on Cinema Summary, I'll be diving deep into how to prove, survive, and beat the demonic mirror, as well as break down the mistakes made along the way and tell you what I would do differently in this recap of the reality warping, memory wiping horror, Oculus. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. Somebody stop me. The movie opens on this little girl whose face is all bloodied, and she's hiding from a man, and she looks terrified as she sneaks out of a room to come face to face with this ghost lady. And when she turns around, there's this older guy pointing a gun at her. But it's actually a dream from that same man holding the gun. Tim Russell, who's now all grown up and been in a mental hospital for 11 years, ever since he killed his abusive dad who tried to kill him and his sister after killing their mom who went crazy. Yeah, and that all happened when he was like 10, so the trauma from the night was pretty heavy. 11 years later. He's released from the hospital to rejoin society with his sister, Kaylee, who's nice but really intense. Like, she's the kind of girl that if you opened up her diary, you'd see pictures of dead animals or something. And she's all like, hey Tim, welcome back to society. Guess what? I found it. And now we can fulfill that promise we made when we were kids. A promise that when they were older, they would destroy that thing that destroyed their family. The Lasser Glass. A mirror that the Russell family had 11 years ago that may be haunted. She's done research that goes back to like 7054, tracking who owned it at what time, at what place, and there's been at least 10 owners, all of whom who died under freak circumstances, and none of them were able to destroy the mirror themselves. Now the thing is, Kaylee's goal is to prove the mirror is evil and that there's something supernatural with it. This makes beating the Lasser Glass difficult because it means we have three goals here. Prove the Lasser Glass is haunted, to clear her dad's name, break the mirror, and survive to tell the world. But what are the rules of the mirror? What makes it so dangerous? Well, it can absorb the life out of living things like plants, animals, and humans. It can mess with electronics, shorting out lights, or messing with phones and TVs. It can give you hallucinations that change what you see, hear, and experience. And we see this as it can mess with your memory and make you forget to eat and drink. So given all its powers, how exactly does Kaylee intend to destroy it? She and Tim take the mirror from this auction house back to her childhood home. You know, the one where their parents died. And remember how I said that she was intense? I was totally right about that. Because she's built this elaborate setup with cameras, lights, food, and looking it over, it looks like she raided some college student's dorm room. Maybe if your parents were dead, you would have learned a thing or two about nutrition. Oh, and each room in the house has like a really sensitive thermostat to monitor the mirror's influence on the room. She's also got plants spread across the house to check the range of the mirror's power. As the closer a plant is to the mirror, the faster it dies. Oh, and as another layer of security, get this, she told her fiance that if she doesn't answer his calls, he should tell the cops that her psycho killer of a brother is there with her. Look at his face. You can just tell he's thinking, thanks sis. Maybe if I throw you into the mirror, I could solve two problems. But most importantly, she's rigged this anchor that's set on a timer. And if it isn't reset in time, it will come swinging and break the mirror. But there's obviously a few flaws of Kaylee's execution. Let's rewind a bit, yeah? The cameras might be able to record all that weird stuff that happens, but how does that help her if the mirror controls what she sees? Her alarms are unmarked, making them easy targets for the mirror to make her not hear them or trick her into checking the wrong alarm. Or worse, trick her into standing in front of the anchor. She should have focused on only destroying the mirror, setting the anchor up, and leaving the house. Of course, now that she and Tim have looked at the mirror, they are also under its influence. Kaylee even tries to use a dog to test the mirror's life-sucking abilities and, I mean seriously Kaylee, of all the dogs that are out there, you choose this one? You should have chosen one that deserved it, like this one, or this one, or even this one. 
Thankfully, Tim puts a stop to the test and lets the dog out and tells Kaylee, let's just move on and get out of here, which is honestly the best piece of advice I've heard this entire movie. And Kaylee's like, damn, you're right, until she sees that the cameras moved themselves. Or did they? Well, actually, Tim and Kaylee moved them, but don't remember because the mirror tricked them. And what's the point of all these cameras if at the end of the day, we're supposed to take them at their word? Like, yeah, I saw you doing whatever over there, and now you're saying you didn't know what you were doing? This is starting to sound like my first marriage. Now to those ends, what can we do to prove that the mirror is haunted? I think a few things would have to be changed to achieve all three goals. I mean, they did a good job, all things considered, but they really should have taken themselves out of the equation. Remember, the mirror uses people to protect itself. However, we do need to bring in more people to prove its powers. We can hire priests and monks, witches and shamans, wiccans and rabbis, dungeons and dragons, whoever we can, who we can record testing and try to exercise the mirror. There are two possible outcomes here. Either they are successful, which is a win because the mirror ghost is gone, or they fail, which is still a win because the mirror will influence them and prove its powers. You can then live stream the whole investigation, posting on places like r slash paranormal or slash x if you're into that sort of thing. These viewers could act as eyewitnesses and keep things accountable, providing input, and if things start to go bad, they can call the cops. Who am I kidding? This guy's not gonna call the cops. Like, I get it if that sounds crazy, but come on. You're dealing with a supernatural mirror. It makes perfect sense to use the supernatural against it. I mean, Ghostbusters might have proved science could work against ghosts, but they had Bill Murr. We came, we saw, we kicked it Either way you do it, you cement reality by getting a truckload of people who are not only outside of the room, but can't be influenced by the mirror. In short, there's safety in numbers. Unfortunately, Kaylee didn't think about bringing more people. Let's say all communication is off limits. If we can't trust what we hear, what can we do to communicate? Kaylee actually did a pretty good job here. Watching the plants and the dog's life drain away is pretty convincing evidence. The only thing is, how do you know the mirror isn't changing what's being recorded on the camera? Because Kaylee revealed all her tricks to proving the mirror is haunted in front of it. What we need is something that the mirror doesn't know about and can't see. So for the dog, you could insert a chip into it that could track its health and vital signs. If the mirror kills the dog, we will know how and why it died. As for plants, you could take them to a molecular biologist or someone who doesn't have a career on YouTube. Harvard Biochemical, how can I help you? Hi, yes, um, I'm a YouTuber, and I was just wondering, how could you tell if a plant had its soul taken by an evil mirror? Hello? Hello? They put me on hold. Okay, so what exactly happened that led to all of this? We learned more about the things that led up to Kaylee and Tim's dad going off the handle. As Kaylee saw, their dad began having an affair with a woman named Marisol, and the dad himself is beginning to see things. Like, at one point, he begins ripping off his fingernails, thinking that they're band-aids, which I think we've all been there at least once in our lives, but he's not the only one who's changed. The plants in the house are dying, the family dog is sick all the time, poor puppy, and Kaylee and Tim's mom is becoming more unhinged. She swears she sees someone in the house at night, so the dad buys a gun and begins leaving the house to go golfing. Right, is that what they're calling it? Now, one day while he's out golfing, the dog freaks out and gets locked in the room with the mirror. And when the dad comes back, the dog is gone. Kaylee and Tim's mom begins to starve herself and tries to break the mirror. But it pulls out a reverse Uno card and breaks her mind, making her try to kill her kids only to get knocked out by her husband who chains her up in their bedroom and not the good kind of chained up. Now, Kaylee and Tim also begin to hear and see things, or when they try calling the doctor and the police, they hear the same voice saying, Ask your dad. Ask your dad. Ask your dad. Things are getting really dangerous right now, and Kaylee and Tim realize that they need help, but I think if they did a couple things a little differently, they could have gotten away from the mirror. So how should they escape? She really gave her dad a run for his money. She called over the neighbor, she tried to call the doctors and the police, 
she broke out of the house a few times, and of course tries to break the mirror. I mean, I get it, if I chained up my wife and wanted to spend some quality time with a mirror, I'd be pretty angry too. All in all, Kaylee's plans were pretty realistic, and pretty clever for a little girl to pull off. And before you say something like, why didn't they use a computer? Well, it wouldn't have worked. As we know, the mirror can control what they see and mess with electronic devices. This leaves us with communicating in person. If these kids want any chance of convincing someone to check out their home, they're gonna need some money and evidence. And given the time frame of their childhood, early digital cameras and disposable ones were pretty common in the early 2000s. Assuming the family had one already, the kids would want to take photos of their mom chained up and signs of neglect. Now the money can be stolen from their dad's wallet, taken from their piggy bank, or they can go digging around the couch cushions for some change. But before they go, they need to check out the yellow pages for the address of Child Protective Services. Once outside, they can walk to the nearest bus stop and wait for a bus. If they show the address along with the evidence to someone on the bus, they can ensure that they can get to the Child Protective Service Center. Damn it, close for COVID. <laughs> Come on. Back in the house, exposed to the mirror, and Kaylee is showing signs of being affected by it badly. Like, she eats this apple, but then realizes she actually ate a light bulb, and you see her pull out a shard of glass from her mouth. And then there's this other time where she wakes up in front of the mirror, barely getting to the anchor in time to reset it. Yeah, she got cocky with her plan, and check this out. After the power goes out, she breaks a flower pot, and when she looks at the broken pot through her phone, the phone doesn't see the shards. As soon as she turns around, she sees this monster and stabs it with a pot shard. It was actually her fiance who was definitely dead for realsies. Now Tim goes outside to call the police, think that they just need to wait it out a bit more. But then the lights of the house turn on and they see themselves standing in front of the mirror. But the call doesn't seem to go through as they hear the same voice they heard as kids saying, Now the events of the film intersect with the past and the present. The dad loads up his gun and lets his wife off the chain as the younger Kaylee breaks out of a window and falls off the roof. She's alive and out, but Tim, not so much. And Kaylee, God bless her, goes back to save him, even though she can see the ghosts of the mirror's previous victims through the window. Now, the ghosts are gone, but Tim is hiding behind this counter thing, and he's mouthing something to Kaylee. He was trying to warn her, because as soon as she turns her head, she gets taken down to the ground by her mother, who begins choking the life out of her. And she stops for just a moment, only for daddy over here to shoot her dead. The kids barely make it out to the mirror room and try to break it using golf clubs. That doesn't work. And their dad comes in and is about to shoot them, but he has a moment of self-control and helps Tim shoot him. He dies and his body leaves his crack on the mirror as the ghostly victims scream at the kids. But Tim manages to break out of the mirror's control and rushes to trigger the anchor. At the same time, Kaylee sees her mother reaching for her from the mirror. And Kaylee walks over to her and... Oh my god, you just killed Kaylee. Okay, time out for a minute. Why would Tim think of pulling on the kill switch early wouldn't have consequences? I mean, he knows he can't trust what he sees. What he should have done is as soon as he saw the room was empty, he should have thought to himself, huh, where's Kaylee? Oh, there she is, with an anchor through her head. <laughs> Classic Kaylee. Mind you, the anchor is heavy and weighted, so even though it should be able to break the mirror through Kaylee's body, it doesn't. And that's game over for Tim. His phone call to the cops earlier actually went through, and now they're here to take him away. Just as they did 11 years ago, and as Tim is taken away, he sees that Kaylee has joined the other spirits in the mirror. So Tim is arrested, Kaylee's a ghost, and the mirror won. So how do we beat it? Something we do know is that the more you're around the mirror, the more influence it has over you. Tim and Kaylee should not have been in the room at all. That way they find methods to limit the amount of exposure to the mirror. Now Kaylee's anchor trap is an ingenious work around the mirror's ability. And I think to really beat it, we have to do more of that, making things automated. That way we take ourselves out of the equation, keeping us safe from harm. Now to actually beat it, we're gonna need a different setup. For this, we're gonna put the mirror over here, just like in the movie, with a camera on the same side. Now these cameras have some company, 
a pair of mounted rifles set to a mechanized trigger. Now behind the guns is a barrier that blocks our line of sight with the mirror. Also, since the guns are on the other side of the barrier, there is no risk to us crossing over and getting hurt on accident. Something that was clearly possible with Kaylee's anchor. If they had to be in the room, they should have at least had another failsafe that would keep them, well, safe. As well as something that could contain them, like cables, handcuffs, or leather harnesses. No wait, not, not those kinds. In any case, distance and obscurity is the key to breaking the mirror. If you want to increase your chances of beating the laser glass, keep your exposure to the mirror to a minimum, find ways to stay still, and keep things automated. Well, she might not have made it, but you might. Now you know how to prove the mirror is haunted, how to escape it, break it, and of course, things you shouldn't do in case you're ever up against a demonic mirror. But what do you guys think? Could Kaylee and Tim do all three? Let me know that and your own strategies in the comments below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below, and subscribe to get updated on videos like this. Until next time, have a damn good day.